Mother to my daughter is my purpose. There's a reason I started this. And my reason is 11 years old now. She is my everything, she's my inspiration. My daughter approached me one day and just said, Mom, I wanna help people like you help people. She was six at the time, and I remember that she's watching me in everything I do, and, and to leave that legacy with her, to live a healthy lifestyle is, to me, the most important thing I can give to her and others. When I build my body, I see a person strong enough to take on the world. No matter what is thrown at me, I know I can do it. Yes, I wanna look good, but I also wanna feel good. It gives you the power to know that you can do all the things you wanna do. We've been given a gift. You need to be the best person you can, physically, mentally, and socially, so that you can be all you can be versus just being one part of who you really should be. You'll be able to do anything you want to do in life, and you should do it. Set an example. Build resilience. Build your body. Build your life. Bodybuilding.com I'm building my body to be able to do things. It's like your body of work, and your body of work is applied to everything you do. It's a tool for me, so. What's up, guys? Trainer Mike here for your Flex Friday workout of the day, and today we're hitting chest. Now, this is the workout that we all wait for, right? It's chest day. So uh, Friday chest day is actually my second chest day of the week. We hit chest on Tuesday, we're coming back and we're hitting it again today. It's a focus point for me. So any kind of focus point that you have, any kind of muscle group that you're trying to develop, I always recommend that you hit two times per week. So starting off today with some bench press. Now one thing you'll notice about today is that uh, we're gonna start off a little heavier. It's kind of typical for these workouts. So you'll notice that's, that's the style I like to train. I like to start off with your heavy compound movements and then work towards the higher reps, the isolation movements, more your tempo stuff as the workout goes on. So we're gonna start with bench press today, this very basic five by five, okay? And we're kinda gonna work our, our way up as we go. We don't wanna do every single set to failure as we first start. These are strength sets. And if we move strength sets to failure, we end up fatiguing ourselves too much to the point where we're not able to be effective at all the other exercises that we do. So starting off today, five sets of five on the bench press. I've got 225 on there right now. We're gonna go real strict, real clean for these first five reps. We're gonna get a pause right at about the sternum on every rep, and then we'll kind of gauge from there how we wanna go up. So let's get after it. We're already warmed up. We got going, five sets of five bench press. Here we go. So set one isn't intended to be super heavy, like I said. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty light there. We probably could have done 10 reps, but we've got five sets here, and we've got a lot of other exercises. So as you start this off, don't go ham on set one and wear yourself out for the rest of the workout. Make sure that you work yourself into it a little bit here. Yeah, training plans for the holidays, that's a good question. So over the holidays, I'm gonna try and stay as consistent to my plan as I can, but there kinda comes a point, guys, where you say, you know what? I'm probably gonna have to switch some things up. So typically, yeah, I, I train six days a week, but you know, over the holidays, I might only be able to train four days a week, maybe five days a week to spend more time with the family. And in that case, we're gonna do more like chest and back workouts. Okay, we might do delts and arms. So we just combine a few more muscle groups together. Another 
Yes, yes. So you could do like five by five for most exercises on Monday or Tuesday, and then come back on like a Friday. And so we like to have about 72 hours in between and then do uh, more in like the 10 to 12 rep range. Absolutely. That works out very, very well. All right, guys, we're gonna put a 25 on here on each side. So we are at 275, nothing crazy. Bench is not a super, super strong movement for me. We're gonna try and keep five pretty clean reps here for set two. Let's go. So one definitely got a little harder. No pause reps at the bottom of that one, uh, but we're still making sure that we come down to the chest. And that's a question I get asked a lot is where on the chest do you wanna bring the bar down to? We're coming right to about sternum. A lot of people make the mistake on bench press of going too high, which puts a lot of stress on the shoulders. So we tuck the elbows in just a little bit, try and drive right to about sternum. Yeah, five by five is primarily for building strength. That said, um, everybody needs a good foundation of strength in order to have good size. So if you're just starting off lifting and you're like, no, I'm not gonna do five by five because I'm trying to get jacked, so I gotta focus on 10 to 12 reps, do a combination of the two. And studies show, maybe have one day where you focus more on strength, one day where you focus more on hypertrophy, that's gonna produce the best gains. Where's, dang it. The headband's in the bag. When we move over there, we start sweating a little bit, we'll put the headband on. But I do have it, I have it. Try not to wear it every day, because it gets, uh, to be honest, it gets a little smelly. So, you know, it's freshly washed today though. Do I do push? Yeah, yeah, no, I see what you're saying. So do you do push pull? Yeah, sometimes I'll do push pull for upper body um, or even lower body at that or even full body. And when I do that, I'll typically go all of my compound movements first. So I'll go maybe go bench press and then I'll go standing overhead shoulder press and then I'll come back and hit my dumbbell press and then maybe dumbbell laterals and then I'll come to like my flies and then do like reverse flies. Good question. All right, guys, set three, five reps. We'll stick here at 275. That felt like a good weight. No spotter today, so we don't wanna push it too hard. Here we go. Five reps, trying to keep our butt down, trying to bring that bar right to the sternum. Here we go. So these workouts, the way I design these is I really want to give you guys a good workout that combines the strength and the size. Some people are going more for strength. Some people are going more for size. So these workouts, typically what we do on Fridays are good workouts. If you're going to hit chest like one time per week, there's a great way to hit it from all different areas. The shoes. The Olympic neon. Guys, I don't know what it is, but something about the neon with the BBCom blue, I just dig it. I really, really like it. So yeah, these are the, uh, it's like the Nike Olympic version from uh, last Olympic, so. I never do decline bench. I can remember one time 
In the past probably four years I did decline bench because all the benches were taken and I wanted to bench. So no, I typically don't. I feel decline more through my shoulders, through my triceps. Uh, I just, I hate the movement. And it's not a bad movement. Might work really well for you, but for me, I just don't feel it in my chest. So I typically aim for more like today, we're gonna do dips. We're gonna do a machine dip. I feel that a lot better in my lower chest. All right, guys, I gotta get it. I got my fast shoes on. I'm getting my headband. When we're doing a five by five, we want to rest a little longer in between sets. So we're going to aim for probably about two minutes in between sets. Gains are no longer lost. We got the headband guys. I appreciate you holding me accountable to it. Yeah, so when we're doing like a five by five, we want a little longer rest time because we need the time to recover. It's a compound movement. Our goal is strength on these. As we progress further into the workout, the rest time gets a little shorter. So set four, five reps, headband gains are on. I can probably get 30 now with the headband. Let's see. better with the headband, no doubt about it. Drinking today, I've got two scoops of Dimatize Amino Pro, flavor orange today. Usually, I'm not a big fan of orange, but uh, they nailed this one. So, tastes pretty good. Again, electrolytes, five grams of aminos, um, good intra-workout drink. One piece of advice to improve chest workouts. I got two, two pieces of advice. Piece number one, you have to keep your scapula retracted while you're pressing. So a lot of people make the mistake of coming down and then protracting shoulder blades at the top, especially on machines, especially when they get fatigued. You see a lot of this. Keep those shoulder blades pinched together. That's gonna help put you in the most advantageous position to activate your chest and see gains. Number two, tempo, okay? A lot of people moving way too fast on chest. Control your tempo down, up. As you progress through the workout, even look to get that little isometric hold at the bottom. Keep the shoulder blades together, control tempo, completely change your chest workout. Now, if you don't get the pump feeling from your chest workouts, try the two things I just recommended. Shoulder blades together. So it's like you're trying to squeeze something in between your shoulder blades and you hold it there. And that can be hard when you get to the top of a press because everybody wants to ugh, a little bit more. And that's just, that, that deactivates the chest, puts way too much stress on your shoulders. Try that. And you'll notice here, like, I've got a little arch in my back and that's okay on chest. You want a little arch in your back, you wanna keep your butt down. You wanna expand that rib cage, pull your shoulder blades together, and that's gonna allow you to activate the chest. If you flatten out your back, and then you start rounding your shoulder blades, it, it completely takes that tension off the chest that you want. Um, have you ever tried the AMRAP 225 like they do in the combine? Yes, I've AMRAP 225 before. The most I've ever got is 22 reps. And it's, uh, I don't know what I'd get now. I usually warm up with like 10 reps and it feels uh, pretty light, but man, you hear some of those guys doing 50 reps and whatnot, that's just, <laughs> that's crazy, that's crazy. All right guys, last set of five, headband gains. <sighs> Whew. 
There we go, guys. Not quite to failure. Like I mentioned before, we don't want to go to failure on the five by five. We got to save ourselves. As our reps come up, we'll start going to failure. So now we're going to go to an incline press, flat bench press, primarily hitting middle of the chest. Now we're going to go to incline, target some more of that upper chest. And as our reps come up, we're going to start getting a better pump too. So the question was asked about the pump. And, um, you know, quite honestly, you're not going to get a big pump out of five reps. You got to come up a little bit. So we're going to go incline machine press, four sets of eight. I think that drop sets and supersets are really good for hypertrophy later on in the workout. Get your compound strength stuff out of the way first. I don't know. People just not focused on gains around here, I guess. Gym's always empty. No, in all honesty, guys, you know, bodybuilding.com, a lot of people come in before they start work. They'll come in on their lunch break. They'll come in after work. But uh, we are smack dab in the middle of the work morning. So there's a lot of work to get done around here. People focusing on helping other people get gains. You can't focus on your own gains all the time. It's just selfish. All right, we're gonna put three plates on each side. This is a uh, hoist machine. So this one actually moves with me. Uh, great machine, I love it. But if, you're, if your gym doesn't have one of these, just try a plate loaded machine that targets that uh, incline. So we're gonna go for eight reps here. Now, as we move on to the machine work, we're focusing a lot more on that contraction, on that tempo. We're slowing things down a little bit and we're trying to make sure we get the best squeeze possible. As the reps get closer to 10, we're gonna start feeling the chest fill out more. We're gonna start feeling a lot better pump out of it as well. Whew. Which exercises Which exercise target lower outer corner? Um, to be honest, guys, a lot of the times people try, they get too caught up in trying to target a specific area of the chest when they don't have a chest. I'm not saying that's the case here, but I know for me, I was like six months into lifting and I'm like, okay, what, what, what exercise is gonna target right here? And what exercise is gonna target right here? And we get too caught up in trying to hit all these different exercises when we have to focus more on our core. Fact is, if you fill out your chest, you'll start getting some of those lines that you're looking for. But the other thing is a lot of it's genetic, you know? People either have a round chest or they have a square chest. So some people have that square chest that's got like that corner at the bottom. Other people just genetics will have more of a round chest to them. Whew. All right, guys, set two, eight reps, keeping our rest time a little shorter here. Feels good, not the time to get crazy, start throwing a bunch of momentum around. Really focusing on, like I said, keeping those shoulder blades together and a good tempo. Those are two key things to getting the best chest workout possible. Uh, what's your favorite form of cardio? My, my favorite form of cardio? I don't know that uh, I have a favorite. I like HIT, high intensity interval training. And you know what I did last week that I really liked is one of those assault bikes. So if you guys have ever used like one of those, uh, you know, like Schwinn makes one, a lot of companies make them now, but the assault bikes with the arms and the legs, I like HIT because I get a lot more done in a shorter period of time. I'm an impatient person. I've got a lot to do. So I like that and dead mills. So where you don't turn on the treadmill and you just push the belt with your legs, six 30 second sprints with 90 seconds rest in between best cardio workout you can get. 
What was that? So I've got, there's a, I like like, uh, like house music, okay? Um, I used to listen to like Slipknot and Hatebreed and stuff. And then I actually started listening to the lyrics and I was like, no, nah, it doesn't really align with what I like. So I like just like house music. A lot of times there's not even any words at all. There's actually a playlist on Spotify right now called Wobble that uh, is a really good one. For you guys that like that kind of music, that's been my go-to workout playlist for the past probably month. All right, that's really weird. Like on Fridays, I think it's empty in here and there's no music. It's a little different working out to that. All you can hear is your heavy breathing. You get to know yourself pretty well. Here we go. Breathing is a super important part of chest as well. So you guys will notice that as I come down at the bottom, whether it's on a bench press or whether it's on this, that big breath in, brace your core as you, before you press, makes a big difference in just one, controlling your breathing, stabilizing your core, making sure you get the best reps possible. If you guys don't pay attention to your breathing while you're working out right now, you're probably missing out a little bit. It'll help you control your reps and control your tempo. So my rule of thumb is every rep gets a breath. So if I start going super fast, I'm gonna pass out because I'm breathing too fast. So it's a good way just to make sure you get that brace and then press, blow out. That'll help you control the tempo of your reps a lot more. Who don't have what? So your pecs aren't symmetrical. It can be due to a number of things. My pecs aren't symmetrical. My left one has always been smaller than my right one. This because I broke my arm when I was 12 years old and I was in a cast for eight weeks. And ever since then, my left side just has not caught up to my right side. It's crazy to think, 12 years old, but that's what I attribute it to. Pretty normal, work a lot of dumbbells, when you can, um, focus on those exercises that require both arms to move independently. Yeah, you can do some chest activation exercises before warming up. I think it's most important that you do some active dynamic stretching. So I like getting a PVC pipe and doing pass-throughs just to make sure my shoulders are warmed up. Sometimes I'll just do like some seal hops to help warm up my chest. Activation exercises, I think it's fine to do some, but I wouldn't get too crazy with it. You know, you wanna make sure you're warmed up, that your chest is activated, but I don't think you need to do like flies or anything like that beforehand. All right, last set, eight reps. Here we go. Uh, 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 uh. Woo, there it is guys set two is done so now we're going to move on target that lower chest a little bit my favorite way to do that is by some kind of dip or dip machine so we're gonna use this hoist dip machine here. We're gonna focus on leaning forward just a little more than we normally would. And we're gonna get the best lower chest contraction that we can here with this exercise. So what do you guys like to do for lower chest? Do you guys like, do you feel a decline press best? Do you prefer dips? What works best for you guys? How do you get taller? That's pretty easy. You just, you, you, you sleep upside down at night. So I recommend hanging from your feet. Or, you know, if you're under the age of 12, you just keep 
living and eating and sleeping? It's a good question though. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna go for 10 to 12 reps here. Yeah, so like that, I feel really good in my lower chest. I never feel a decline press like that in my lower chest. So find what works for you guys. You know, and you might find that you like that decline bench press. For me, it just doesn't work well for what I'm looking to accomplish. It depends. It depends on, you know, how, I guess it depends on what you want your um, RPE or rating of perceived exertion to be at. I'm guessing, and guys, I never pay attention to percentages, but I'm guessing you're somewhere in the 70 to 80% ballpark um, for that. But it's gonna change just a little bit for everybody too, so. It's a good question though, it's a good question. I would recommend working at an RPE of like eight to nine, okay? You've got one to two reps in reserve if you wanna look at it like that, but um, kinda depends. Do you switch up your grip when you're doing different Yes, so I'll switch up my grip. Typically, for like a bench press, I'm going just a little wider than shoulder width. Nothing super wide, nothing really any more narrow than that, but um, I'll switch it up. You know, occasionally we'll try and go a little more narrow, other times we'll go a little wider, but most of the grip changes come later on in the workout. I'm not gonna play around with a heavier movement like bench press um, for safety reasons. I'm gonna go where I'm comfortable, but as the weight gets lighter, I'll definitely play with it a little bit. All right, guys, 10 reps. feel triceps in here but you got to remember every press that you do the triceps are involved so definitely feel triceps in here I'm not too worried about it because um, I feel my chest working as well so any press is gonna involve some chest some triceps um, but we're, we're focusing we're trying to focus on that chest here I do both, so on cable crossovers, there's sometimes where I'll go a little lighter and I will actually cross. Okay, I do feel a little better contraction in my inner chest when I do that. And there's other times where I just really focus on keeping those shoulder blades together and just come to the middle. I try a combination of the two, it depends. And uh, you gotta feel it out. Again, do it, try both, see what produces the best contraction for you and go with that. Yep. Uh, does it matter if I'm doing this or is it just comfort? Yeah, it's just more just comfort. So there's a narrow and there's a wide. I've got it set on narrow right now. Um, it's just more off of comfort. I could go wide and that's fine. Typically the wider you go, the little bit more strain it's gonna put on your shoulders. Not a big deal though. Okay guys, 10 reps. <sighs> Uh, 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 uh. And we're trying to keep our shoulder blades even in place here. The mistake a lot of people make on dips is they shrug and then they depress. Shrug and depress and it becomes a lot of trap movement and we want to keep the traps out of it and try and get the most activation out of our chest as we can. Cardio 
depends on what your goal is for how much cardio I recommend. I recommend everybody do at least two sessions of HIIT cardio per week if you're trying to build. Um, well, if you're trying to build, not at least, just limit it to two. If you're looking to lose body fat, I'd go three sessions of HIIT per week and three to five sessions of steady state cardio in the morning. So uh, 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 anabolic fasted, wake up, hit aminos, and 30 minutes of 60 to 70% of your max heart rate. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Underhand chest press have any role in a chest workout, I think it's good. I think it's great. Switch it up. Again, it's all about variety. Add that variety in there. You know, with the underhand, you definitely get a little more tricep because what happens there is you move that elbow down so far. But I really like the feeling of underhand. I'll, I go underhand dumbbell. I don't like underhand barbell because I feel like it's hard on the wrist. Okay guys, last set here. One, two, three, four. Woo! Feels good, the pump is starting to hit us. Now we move on to the real fun stuff. The way I see, you almost got to earn it. You got to earn that pump. So you do your heavier stuff. Now we're moving on to cable fly supersetted with cable press. So somebody asked about supersets, drop sets. Do they have their place? I believe that they do. And we're going to see that now. So 10 cable flies. By then we're going to be a little fatigued, which is the perfect time to move on to a press because we typically have more strength able to move more weight in a press. So we are gonna go 10 cable fly, followed by 10 press, short rest period, repeat three times. Here we go. Rotate elbows in and press. Ooh, two, three, four, five, 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 eight, oh. Now we talk about keeping shoulder blades together. This is where it gets really important. On that second set there, on that super set, I wanted to reach because my chest is fatigued. Keep your chest stretched out. Keep your shoulder blades pulled together. Get the best pump possible. Uh, what are your thoughts on blood flow restriction training? Blood flow restriction training is great. I'll incorporate it occasionally. It's really, really good for people with injuries or for a limited amount of time. If you fall into either of those categories, maybe you're you're nursing a little bit of an injury or you just don't have much time. What blood flow restriction training does, is it produces similar results with less volume. And um, it's not gonna produce better results. So if you have the time and the ability to go through a full training session with a full load of weight, I recommend that. Throw in blood flow restriction training occasionally, but it's not gonna give you better results than a training session would. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, do you suggest split training over on each muscle group once per week? So it depends on what your goal is. Like if you can train six days per week, you know, I say go ahead and break it up into body parts. But if you only have three to four days to, to train, yeah, you're gonna do like a push, pull, upper body, lower body type of split. And both are fine guys, they really are. Okay, 10 flies, 10 press. Here we go. <sighs> Ah. 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 
One. Two. Three. Four. Ah. 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 Woo! That's where the burn and the pump comes in. Not a bad idea in between these sets. Just to take a second, hit a pose, squeeze that chest, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Get as much of that blood in there as you possibly can. This is where you're gonna start feeling the pump come in. We've earned it. We did some heavier lifts, we focused on lower reps. Now we feel the volume come into the muscles. Guys, yeah, flat, switch between flat and incline press. So one week, maybe you're gonna start with a flat press. Next week, start with an incline press. That's just a great way to make sure you're targeting that upper chest as much as you're targeting the mid chest. But keep in mind, a flat bench press is going to target all areas of the chest. An incline press is just gonna hit the upper chest a little more. It's not like you do a flat press and you never develop your upper pecs, okay? The pecs contract as a whole, and you can build a really good chest off a of flat press alone. Uh, what advice would you give to a teen just getting started? So a teen just getting started, focus on the basics, okay? You've got your core squat, push, pull movements that you do, okay? Focus on your squats, your deadlifts. Focus on your bench press, your dumbbell press. Focus on your deadlifts your pull-ups, your bent rows, okay? Try not to get too caught up in cables and you know isolation exercises. Focus on building that strong base. Okay guys, last set, 10 and 10, here we go. Yes, the blood is flowing, chest feels pumped. Take a second, hit a couple poses, drive the blood in there. Whew. This is a good workout. Uh, question, do you think anyone ever achieves their goal physique, or is it always a changing image of something that achieve? That's a good question. Be proud, but never satisfied. And I think that, uh, I don't think anybody's ever fully satisfied with the physique they build. I don't know anybody that's ever been like, I did it. I built, I built what I was looking for, so now I can chill out. You always have to have a goal, and I think that that's normal, but make it healthy too. You gotta respect the work that you've put in and what you've built, but uh, it's, it's always good to have a goal. I think where people run into challenges where they're like, oh, I suck. I'm never going to build the physique I want. I just can't do it. Now, I'll be proud of the changes that you've made, but it's okay to have goals to shoot for. All right, close grip dumbbell press, supersetted with dumbbell press. We're going to move a bench over here. This is a fun one, guys. So we'll go right over here. So this is a close grip press. We're gonna target that inner chest and then move to a flat press. We're gonna probably go like 45 pounds here. Chest is starting to fatigue pretty good. We wanna get the most out of this exercise. So we're gonna control our weight. Three sets, again on this guy. Here it is. Elbows out, push biceps together. Dumbbell press. Or 
works really well with the round dumbbells. So I like that we have those here because it allows the dumbbells to roll and then roll nicely. And the chest is just, we're starting to get full. We're starting to feel a real good pump come in. It's because we've got the volume in there. We're mind muscle connection on that chest with every single contraction. Man, chest is tough when you're tall. Chest is really tough when you're tall. Um, try playing around with some partial reps. Okay, so, you know, I don't recommend the Smith machine a lot, but it might make sense to get in there and do like some partials on the Smith machine because there's so much room for you to press your six, five arms all the way out that those partial reps can actually play a pretty critical role there. But just remember, you got a lot of size you're trying to fill out. So you're gonna fill out a lot slower no matter what than somebody who's 5'5". Five five. So but that's, you know, being tall has its advantages. Being shorter has its advantages too. You can't have it all, right? Uh, I was trained to rotate the dumbbell on the way up and down during the dumbbell press. What do you think about that? I don't think it makes a lick of difference, to be honest. I've done both, rotate the dumbbell on the way up and I've done not rotating the dumbbell. To me, it's kind of like, well, we're gonna try a press and a fly at the same time. I, I just prefer to focus on my presses and my flies separately. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just don't think you're gonna see a real big benefit from it. All right, here we go. 10 and 10, all the way down, biceps together. Turn. Now one downside to turning your dumbbells on the top of the movement is that a lot of people use that as like justification or excuse to rest a little bit. And that's one reason why I don't like turning. You're not getting any better contraction at the top. You're actually resting. So I like just pressing up as soon as you get to the top, coming right back down. Is it normal that I'm not always sore the next day? Yeah, you don't have to get sore, guys. Soreness is not a prerequisite for growing muscle. Uh, after a while, you just, you get, you get kind of um, used to the exercise that you're doing. But I would say, if your chest hasn't got sore in a really long time, it's time to switch some stuff up. Soreness happens typically on the eccentric or negative portion of the movement. So maybe just go and blast a workout where you do all tempo work. I bet you'll get sore. Um, how many times do you usually train chest during the week? I train chest two times per week because it's a focus point for me. So if you're trying to grow a muscle group, develop it, I recommend training it twice per week. All right, guys, last set, three reps. Here we go.
Boom, back at you here. So we lost you for just a minute. Whew. I thought we weren't gonna get to do this burnout, but I'm ready to do this burnout. And I want you guys to see it. So again, we're gonna go five push-ups. Come up on the Smith machine at a low level for five, bump it up a notch five, bump it up a notch five, and we're gonna try and do a total of 25 push-ups, so five sets of five. Here we go. Starting on the floor for five. Good and controlled. Right onto the lowest level of the Smith machine for five. Coming up one for five. One more for five. And finally, one more for five. Two, three, four. Uh, whoo! There it is, guys. Five sets of five for a good finisher there on chest. I hope you guys check out this chest workout. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at TrainerMike1. Happy to answer any questions you guys have there on Facebook. Follow my page at Trainer Mike Physique. Let me know what you guys want to see. We're checking out. Flex Friday, chest day here at bodybuilding.com. Boom.